This is the hippocampal dissection of the sheep brain. The structure used to live right about there. I have removed most of the cerebral cortex right about here and I've also removed the cerebellum. I cut down through the cerebral cortex until I got to the, uh, the ventricle that surrounds the hippocampus. You're seeing the hippocampus right here and you can actually see part of the ventricle that was surrounding it here. I can just peel this back. It was only really attached once I did the dissection, it was only really attached on the mid-sagittal view as the fornix. Now you can see that the hippocampus comes around and in the midline becomes the fornix right about there. So let's pull that aside. That's the hippocampus, important for certain kinds of long-term memory. Once we pull it aside, we reveal the thalamus. The structure right here is the lateral surface of the thalamus. We saw the medial surface on the mid-sagittal view. The dorsalmost lump of the thalamus right here is the pulvinar. Right underneath here is the pulvinar nucleus. The thalamus consists of a series of nuclei, chunks of gray matter, deep in the brain. <clears throat> it's covered up, though, with kind of a, a white matter candy shell, so you don't really see the nuclei when you're looking at the surface like this. But right underneath here is a chunk of gray matter called the pulvinar nucleus. Right underneath here, underneath this lateralmost lump, is a chunk of gray matter called the lateral geniculate nucleus. The LGN, or lateral geniculate nucleus, is the thalamic relay station for vision. This here is the optic tract. Optic nerve is right there. So visual information would come from the retina to the optic nerve. These million or so axons then carry that information right into the lateral geniculate nucleus, where those axons make a synapse with the cell bodies that make up the LGN. The axons coming off those cell bodies then become this white matter here called the optic radiations and relay those signals back to primary visual cortex in the occipital lobe. Just caudal to the lateral geniculate nucleus is the medial geniculate nucleus, or MGN. This is the thalamic relay for hearing. Here we've got the superior colliculus and inferior colliculus. Colliculus means little hill. Little hill. The superior colliculus is important for eye movements. The inferior colliculus is part of the pathway for hearing. Auditory information comes in right about here. This is the stump of the vestibulocochlear nerve, carrying information from the cochlea. It makes a couple of synapses in the brainstem here, makes a synapse in the inferior colliculus, makes a synapse in the medial geniculate nucleus, and then that auditory information gets relayed into pr primary auditory cortex in the temporal lobe. So again, here's the, the optic tract. Just caudal to the optic tract here is the cerebral peduncle again. And you can see a little bit of the mammillary bodies as well. Can't see it too well here because the trigeminal nerve is in the way, but right here is kind of a little triangular area. This is called the lateral lemniscus. It's really just the surface of a white matter tract carrying movement information down to the body, carrying auditory information into the inferior colliculus here. This is the stump of the trigeminal nerve, which carries sensory information from parts of the face and neck and movement information to parts of the face and neck. Here's the pons, the medulla, and the spinal cord. 